So, praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome you tonight again to this wonderful crusade talking about the same Jesus our Prince of Peace your Prince of Peace and that peace will reign in your heart in Jesus name and everything that comes with the peace of God from heaven everything will be showered upon your life Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give all the glory to you. For what you did, the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And the blessings that have come to us. The grace that has come to us. The mercy that has flowed into our lives. And the peace we have and the power we have and the confidence we have and the expectation we have because of Christ the same Jesus the Prince of Peace you have done quite a lot for us since we began this particular crusade lives changed lives transformed the peace of God in the heart and the power of God manifested to take away every sickness and every disease. We're asking tonight that you do it again. Salvation again. Healing again. Manifestation of your love and mercy again. Bless everyone, young, old, men, women, here and over there, over the radio, over the television, anywhere, everywhere we connect together with a message of peace. And let your peace reign in every life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Again, we're still talking about the peace that God is giving to everyone. And, and tonight I want to reveal to you, there are two sides to the coin. There is true peace. There is false peace. And we're looking at the message. True lasting peace in a world of false peace. There's something that looks like a semblance of peace in the world. But it's not a peace that reaches our heart. It's not a peace that gives us peace of mind. It's not a peace that assures us of peace in eternity. A false peace. A superficial peace. A covering up of the saw of pain with something that looks like peace. There is false peace in the world. There is true peace, lasting peace that comes from Christ, the Prince of Peace. And we're not interested in that superficial peace and false peace that people carry about. And then the night they're suffering, there's no peace in their lives. We come to the Lord tonight so that we can have 
I, I didn't see it. I said we came to the Lord tonight so we can have. We can have true peace, lasting peace. In the world of false peace. In Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Christ is the true one. Christ is the ever living one. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Because it's true, all he can give is true peace. And because it's everlasting, all he can give is lasting peace. But the world in which you live has fake peace, false peace. And if you buy something fake and you're satisfied with that, not knowing that it is false and fake, then you're not even desire the true and the lasting one. Tonight you'll have the true peace. Tonight you'll have the lasting peace. It says of the increase of his kingdom and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. And then he says to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Will perform it. It needs a performance. It's not just something that's okay to come when it will come. It needs the operation of the hand of God. It is not just something that automatic, okay, God will do it when he wants to do it. I don't have to desire. I don't want to, I don't need to demand. I don't need to ask him. You ask him and then there is a performance of that peace, eternal, everlasting, true and faithful in your heart, in your life. In your life tonight, there will be an operation of the peace of God. A manifestation of the peace of God. A performance of the peace of God. And the zeal of the Lord shall will do this. Have you un do you understand? The zeal of the Lord does not uh, vacillate up, down, always constant, always steadfast, always flowing to the people that desire the peace of God. As God does not change, as Christ does not change, so the zeal of the Lord that performs, that operates, that manifests the peace in our heart, that zeal, that passion, that desire, that purpose does not change. Tonight, the peace of God in your heart, the peace of God in your soul, the fake, the false will be thrown away. The true, the everlasting peace of God will come, saturate your heart. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 17. Isaiah 32, verse 17. 
and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever in the world there's no righteousness so there is no peace in the community tribe to tribe and nation to nation there's no righteousness so there is no peace In the heart of the natural man, in the heart of the ordinary man, ordinary woman, in the child or in the heart of a person, whether young or old, where there is no righteousness, there is no true peace. As we are far away from righteousness, we are far away from peace. It is when Christ comes in. The righteous one, the holy one, and he brings in his righteousness, he also brings in his peace into our hearts. And he says, The work of righteousness that's a divine work, that's God's work, that's gracious work. And it's in that work of righteousness there will be the peace that comes along with the righteousness. Whether we're a small family or a big community, righteousness and peace go together. And the effect of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. And then in verse 18, it tells us, And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. The people who have come to God, the people who are possessed by God, the people who know God, the people who have tasted the mercy and the love and the salvation and the conversion that comes with the Lord. The people who have made covenant with God by the sacrifice of Christ. The people whose lives have been transformed by the sacrifice of Christ. The people whose sins have been taken away. Whose sins have been forgiven. Whose sins have been thrown into the depths of the sea. And they are now called the people of God. By grace. By mercy. By compassion. By faith in the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That's the step every human has to take. So that we quit our sin. We turn away from our sin. We repent of our sins. There is a separation between us and our old life and our sins. And we become the people of God. And he says, my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. And it says, and in short dwellings. And in quiet resting places. That's what we're looking at tonight. The true peace, the everlasting, the lasting peace in a world of fake, false peace. We're looking at three things in the message today. Number one, true peace of heart through the atoning Christ. Peace, true peace. To peace, satisfactory peace. 
Peace secured peace. Peace, steadfast peace. The peace of heart that goes to the very center of our personality. The peace that turbulent things do not disturb. The peace that the violence of the world do not disturb. Does not disturb. The peace that fills our heart, saturates our hearts, and from the center of our life, every other thing, the issue of life, everything now goes on in the peace of the Lord. How do we have that? It's through the atonement of Christ. Number two is the false peace, fake peace, superficial peace, or real peace of hypocrites from the Antichrist. You know, in the world, there's a lot of fake things. There's some um, things that are manufactured, they're fake. They do not have the density they ought to have. They do not have the strength they ought to have. From the little key to open the door to the various things that are made, manufactured, everything, the things in the world, there are fake, fake, fake things. And they do not serve the purpose for which they are fabricated. Fake. False. Facially, it looks like what it ought to be. Before you touch it, before you make use of it, it appears real. The same thing with peace. False. Fake. Useless, worthless, but the people don't know. And they say, I have peace already. That's what we're looking at, number two. The false peace of hypocrites from the Antichrist. Number three, now is the transmitted peace to the humble with assured conversion. When the power of the Lord comes to convert us, and the power of the Lord changes us from within, no pretense, no hypocrisy, no make believe. Through and through in our heart, through and through in our thoughts, through, our, through and through in our interaction with people, through and through in the promises we give each other. The peace of God is transmitted into every heart, the heart of the humble and with assured conversion. We're looking at number one. Number one is true peace of heart through the atoning Christ. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1. In Romans chapter 5 verse 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That word through is very important. How do I have peace with God? When two people have different opinions and different views and different sides and they are not at peace with each other. And the separation between them is causing them loss on every side. A is not at peace with B. 
B is not at peace with A. What A should do to benefit B? Because there's no peace, it will not be done. What B should do to be of benefit to A, B will not do it. So there is loss on each side. When there is no peace between you and God, the loss is on our side. And when we're going to have peace, somebody has to come and make peace for us. An advocate, a mediator, a person that brings the hand of A and the hand of B and then joins them together. Not only their hands, their hearts, it brings their hearts together. He reconciles them. Now, that person, who is going to make the reconciliation? He must be accepted by A and approved of B. Man is separated from God. Man is not at peace with God. Somebody has to come and mediate. Somebody has to come and bring their hearts together. Somebody has to reconcile them. How about Moses? They cannot. How about the high priest Aaron? He can, cannot. Why? They are human. They are not divine. How about an angel? No. They are not human. But they, are, they live in heaven. They cannot reconcile man with God. Who can do that? There's someone and only one. He is called the Son of God. He is called the Son of Man. He is human. He is divine. He is the only one. An angel is not human as well as divine. A man, whether prophet or priest or high priest or whatever, is human, is not divine. The only one that qualifies, the only one that can mediate, the only one that can bring peace between a holy God and a sinful man is the Lord Jesus Christ divine and human. That's why it says, therefore, being justified by faith. We're not justified by the works of our hand. Could my tears forever know and my zeal no respite know? All these cannot atone for sin. Thou and thou alone must save. That's why guilty man, guilty woman, guilt a guilty person has needs a mediator and needs a substitute that will bring man close to God. And when he comes and he says, I am your savior, I am your Lord, I am your substitute, I am the final sacrifice accepted by God. You have to believe that. And it is when you believe that, that the Father sent him so that he can reconcile you with God. It is that faith that you believe. He is the only one that can do it. It is that faith that makes him to justify you and forgive you and set you free from all your sin. 
be justified by faith, we have peace with God. The justification comes before the peace. While you're still guilty, while you're still condemned, while you have not been forgiven, while you have not confessed your sin and forsaken them, while you're still your old, old self, whilst you have not been justified, you cannot have peace with God. And so he says, now that you are justified, now that you are forgiven, now that your life has turned around, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Will you make him the Lord of your life? The master of your life. The controller of your life. It is that. It is the Lordship of Christ that now makes you to have the justification and the peace of God and the peace with God. And that's what we need to understand. He gives peace. He gives forgiveness. He gives freedom. Because we place our trust, our confidence, our faith in Him. And then the real peace will come. Look at that Romans chapter 5 verse 11. In Romans chapter 5 verse 11. Then he says not only so. Not only so. We have peace. That's not all. It says but we also joy in God. Before we didn't like God and God hated our sin. But now we're justified by faith in Christ. And then we have peace. Not only peace, we have joy in God. Again, through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom we have now received the atonement. That's why we're talking about the atonement of Christ. He atoned for us. He sacrificed for us. He destroyed the enmity between God and man. And now we have peace with God and joy, the joy of salvation. And today has to come. I say, this Christ will be my Lord. This Jesus will be my Lord. Then he'll give you the peace and the joy and the salvation and your life will be reconciled unto God. That's what it says in John chapter 14 verse 27. John chapter 14 verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth it. Not as the world giveth peace. Does the world give peace? Yes. When you are doing evil, like they are doing evil, and your actions look alike, and your faces look alike, and your behavior looks alike, you are evil, they are evil, they will be at peace with you. When they send you to steal, and you go to steal, and you bring the result and the reward of the search unto them, there will be peace between you.
when he send you to go and call a lady that you'll mess up with and you agree and you go and call the lady that they'll mess up with there'll be peace with you When they tell you not to walk by your conviction and say, yes, sir, yes, madam. And then you compromise and you obey them. You don't obey Christ. There will be peace between you and them. That's the condition of having peace for the world. But Jesus said, I give you peace. Not as the world giveth it. He said, My peace I give unto you. And then he says, After you've got the peace of God, after you've got that mercy of God, after you've got that salvation of God, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We will have the peace of God. You will have the peace of God. The peace of the world, we have to sin, we have to compromise, we have to do evil with them before they allow us to have peace. You will not have fake peace in Jesus' name. True peace of heart through the atoning Christ. We're coming to point number two here. The false peace of hypocrites from the Antichrist. The false peace of hypocrites from the Antichrist. There is Christ, the Son of God. There is the Antichrist, the incarnate of Satan. But now, as the world is moving on, there is the false peace from the Antichrist. We see that in Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Daniel chapter 8 verse 25 And through his policy also he shall cause crafts to prosper in his hand And he shall magnify himself in his heart And by peace shall he destroy many Christ by peace develops many Christ by peace lifts up many Christ by peace saves many Christ by the sacrifice he made for our peace justifies many but the antichrist by peace destroys many the antichrist is the leader of the sinful world his spirit is now moving all over the world the time is coming when it will come out visibly after the rapture of the church after the church has been taken away to heaven there will be the period of the antichrist before Christ will come again and establish his kingdom the kingdom of peace at that time, when the Antichrist is ruling and reigning all over the world, the Antichrist will try to make peace with people with a bad condition. Take the mark of the name of the Antichrist, there will be peace. 
there will be temporary peace there will be short lived peace there will be a kind of false peace that will lead everyone that takes the mark of the antichrist lead them to hell forever and ever he brings them to so called peace so to destroy them so as to make them perish so as to make them go to hell so that the torment of their punishment will be forever and ever the peace you have in the world is the peace coming through the antichrist you make a covenant with them i agree with you in everything I will do any evil you, go to, you tell me to go and do. I will mess up other people's daughters, other people's wives. Then you can have a temporary peace. I will join the gang. I will smoke with you. I will be drunk with you. I will gamble with my life for you. Then you have temporary peace for them. I will not walk straight from the scripture I know. I will not do whatever you don't like. Whatever you like. You want me to tell a lie, that's what you like. You want me to deceive, what, that's what you like. You want me to hurt other people, that's what you like. I will do what you like. I yeah, have temporary peace with you. But if you say no, I'm born again. I'm saved. I will not do evil, whatever the consequence. Justified by faith. Having peace with God. I stand for what is right. Christ will give you peace. But the Antichrist will not make life easy. Never mind for a short time. You agree with Christ. You surrender to Christ. You bend to Christ. You make him your Lord and Savior. It, it will give you peace that passes understanding. Everybody say amen. Yeah. amen. But in the case of the Antichrist, through his policy also, he shall cause craft, deception to prosper in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace, false peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. The Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is against the prince of princes. And he's trying to distribute fake, false peace so as to get your heart away from the Prince of Peace. But at the end of that great tribulation, he shall be broken without hands. Judgment will come upon him. Look at First John chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 3. First John, chapter 4, reading there from verse 3. And what's the scripture saying here? The scripture is saying that the spirit of the Antichrist is walking in the world. Distributing and giving false peace. And when people carry about that false peace, they are not interested in seeking for the genuine, true peace that will lead us to heaven. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, 
and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh to save us is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it shall come. And now, even now, already is it in the world. The spirit of the Antichrist already is in the world. And all that the Antichrist will do when he comes at the time of the great tribulation is already doing it now in a hidden form. Deception and false peace. And the facial friendliness, but there's no peace because that facial friendliness is from the Antichrist. The kind of people that will show this peace, this peace, and behind that, they're throwing a dagger at you. False peace. It is orchestrated by the Antichrist. The one that will say, my friend, will have peace once you are not so rigid about holiness. You are not rigid about obedience of the Lord. You are not rigid about repentance before we can be saved. If we talk the same, if we deceive the same, if we do evil together, we'll have peace. That's peace from the Antichrist. Beware. But when, when Christ comes into our heart, when Christ comes into our life, when Christ rules and reigns in our heart, and the peace of the priest saturates our heart, whatever the Antichrist does, we will defeat that Antichrist. We will destroy the work of that Antichrist. Because our priest, our Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior, he came so that he will destroy all the works of the devil. And I invite you tonight that you own him as your Lord. Accept him as your Savior. And then his peace will reign in your heart. And the Antichrist of this period, of this time, of this day, will come under your feet. Amen, amen. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4 it says, Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. The people who are saying, if you don't compromise, we're not going to have peace. The people who are saying, if you sin, if you compromise, there will be peace between us. False peace that will lead anyone that gets to that false peace into everlasting fire. When we come to God, we have the peace of God. And it says here of God, little children. And I've overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have peace today. You have peace tomorrow. You have peace for the rest of your life. Everlasting peace for you today in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three now. Number three, transmitted peace of the humble to the humble with a short conversion. You have a choice to make. One side here, peace 
true peace. On the other hand, peace, false peace. On this side, repentance, and then you are peace. On this side, keep on sinning, and you have false peace. Keep on compromising, and you have false peace. Deny the truth, then you have false peace. Make a covenant with secret society, then you have false peace. Own and possess an idol and worship idol, then you have false peace. Listen to the Antichrist and make covenant with the Antichrist and take the mark and the behavior and the character of the Antichrist and you have false peace. On the right hand side, Christ the righteous, Christ the Prince of Peace, Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, offers you peace now, henceforth and forever. And you make your choice. The Antichrist offers peace for a period of time, but you'll suffer for that in hellfire forever and ever. And Jesus, the Prince of Peace, says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door of the heart, and he says, I want peace today. I want peace for the rest of my life. I want peace all through eternity. I want the true peace. I want the lasting peace. I want the enduring peace. And I turn away from my sin. And I turn to the Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Peace will come to your heart. And the peace will be forever and ever. But if anyone remains in sin, remains in deception, remains in evil, and somebody says, I'm a Christian, but he doesn't have backbone to stand, and he's uh, compromising every time. Once um, a cohort, or once an agent of Satan frowns at him, frowns at her, he'll say, Satan, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I agree with you now. And they compromise, you'll have false peace, but you will suffer in hellfire forever. <laughs> But the people who are humble, they surrender to the Lord. They want the peace of the Lord. Your peace has come. I said your peace has come. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. Isaiah 57 verse 15. It says, for thus says the high and the lofty one that inhabits eternity whose name is holy I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. When we're humble and we say, I reject the false peace and I come to the Lord tonight with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. And I want to abide forever in peace. Peace with God. Peace in my family. Peace with my neighbors. 
right peace, true peace, not compromising peace. Peace of heart. Peace without fighting. Peace without violence. Peace without revenge. Peace without retaliation. Peace through and through in my heart, in my life, in my soul. I apologize for all the time I've caused commotion, confusion, violence, and strife. Now I bend the knee, I bend my heart, I surrender unto the Lord. And I believe that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. He died for me. I accept the atonement. I accept his peace. I accept to live in peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Lord, I surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender. I will fully love him and obey him. And to his will, I will gladly bow. Peace has come. I said, your peace has come. My peace has come. My peace has come. Praise the Lord. Now, we must be able to, you know, believe in Christ and have the salvation of the Lord and not allow the weather, whatever is happening, to disturb us now. Those who are lifting their chair up, I, I want you to put the chair down so that you can have the chance to stand when I say stand. And then you can have, uh, you know, the privilege of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and the peace of God will come to your life and the rain and the weather will not hinder when I say bow your head and close your eyes and then I say raise up your hand. You will have your hand raised up and Jesus will be your Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. On your behalf, I'm going to talk to that tree. On your behalf, I'm going to talk to the rain. Rain, you will not stop my salvation. Rain, you will not stop my peace and joy. Rain, you will not make me obey Satan. I will obey Christ. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Salvation has come. Peace has come. Righteousness has come. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to have Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Satan will not be the Lord of your life. A man, a woman will not be the Lord of your life. The God of this world will not be the Lord of your life. The Antichrist that wants you to take his mark of deception so you can be at peace with him, he'll not be the Lord of your life. Jesus and Jesus alone. Jesus, your Savior. Jesus that paid the price for your salvation. He will be the Lord of your life. Yes, by that, as closed. You want Jesus to be your Savior? And rain will not disturb your decision? You want Jesus to take the control of your life? And the condition around will not 
dissuade you, will not divert you, will not take you away from Christ and take you to the Antichrist. Raise up your hand there. And if you are raising up your hand, you stand up and stand up in the rain for Jesus. You stand up if you are raising up your hand. You're saying, Lord Jesus, I come just as I am, without any plea, just as I am, but not holding on to my sin that will ruin my life. Lord, I come to you. Raise up that hand and stand up. I'm praying for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we know you are a great God, a merciful God. You want to have peace with every man that turns away from sin. And Christ, our mediator, our advocate, he reconciles us with the Heavenly Father. Lord, we abandon our sin. Lord, we separate from every sin. Lord, we repent and submit and bow unto you. We receive your love now. We receive your grace now. We receive your forgiveness now. We receive the power that sets us free from sin. Forgive your people in Jesus' name. Justify them. Set them free. Put peace in their heart. Write their names in the book of life in heaven. Assure your people of conversion and salvation even now in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said, Let everyone hear your, let everyone hear your amen. Our counselors are there. They'll go around everywhere and they'll put your details down. Well, you're giving your life to Jesus. The joy of the Lord is so much. And the peace from your Savior is so much. The rain means nothing. You're taking it away from the hand of the Antichrist. And you come to Jesus going to be your protector protector your life giver for the rest of your life the joy the peace is greater than every condition around you I can tell us who will come there and they'll take all your details as they ask you we call on our moderating overseer to help us at this time. Don't go away yet. When I come back, I'm going to tell you a story and then I'm going to pray for you. Things are going to be different forever in your life. Please let our counselors go around quickly so that we can take their details. Conseiller, aille partout pour prendre les informations des convertis. If you have given your life to Christ, can you just raise up your hand wherever you are? So that you can identify with you there. Counselors, let's move fast. Locate those who are raising their hands. Quickly, quickly, please indicate you have given your life to Christ. The peace of God has come in your heart tonight. We want our counselors to get closer to them quickly. 
Let's take down their details quickly. Names, address, and then their telephone numbers. Tonight is special in your life. Tonight is glorious in your life. Please finalize the decision you have made by giving your name to those counselors so that the church can have the privilege of praying for you and getting across to you so that you can grow in the Lord. If you are online connected and you have given your life to Christ, check below your players, you will see a link there. gckedquarter.org so connect or slash connect. So pick, click on it, fill the form that you get there. If you're on radio or television, you are linked up with this program and you are giving your life to Christ, please take this number uh, so that you can send SMS about your name and the decision you have made with the Lord Jesus Christ. The same number is for WhatsApp. Plus 234 Nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I repeat plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Please use this avenue to get in touch with the church. And the church will be able to reach out unto you. Uh, those who are not, uh, those who are standing there, please keep praying. God has given you the grace to stand there in spite of the rain. Keep calling on God that tonight. God will reward your patience. God will reward your perseverance. God will re reach out unto you in his power and mind. Counselors, let's see how far you have gone. If you have finished, in any of the sections, raise your hand. Please indicate by raising your hand if you have not been reached. Counselors, raise your flag if you are finished to my left. To the back, left. In the center here, if you are finished, please raise your hand. Let's see. To the right. Please, if you are finished, whether front or back, let's see quickly. All right, let's quickly do so that we can have the blessing of the Lord from our Father in the Lord. Thank you. I can only see one flag. But in the middle here, I've not seen anything. That means we are still busy. Please, those who are finished can move down to where they are so that we can be of assistance. Yes, thank you. Those are the left. Please, at the middle here, we are waiting for us in front and at the back. Quickly, quickly, let's attend to them.
Please be praying that tonight God will connect with your life. Power will connect with your life. Miracles will connect with your life. Yes, in the front here, we are waiting for us. All other places have concluded. Front, in the middle. Thank you. God bless you all. We shall all rise up now. Be on your feet. As the man of God will be bringing God's blessing unto all of us. Praise the Lord. Was that clear? I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord is going to bless you now. It will heal your body. It will destroy every work of the devil in your body, your life, in Jesus' name. You forgot I was going to tell you a story. Have you forgotten? We were having a crusade in one city in Nigeria. And uh, when I started preaching, there was no, you know, beautiful, large, um, you know, stage like this. So the rain started falling on me. I'm falling on the Bible. And then I, I acted as if rain is nothing, miracle will come. Uh, there, was, there was a young man there at the crusade. He came from the village around that place. When he was preparing to come to the crusade, the father died. He had been sick for some time. But the father died as he was coming. But he said, I will still go. All the neighbors were saying, young man, how can you do that? Your father is dead. Stay here and keep on crying. He said, my cry will not wake up my father. When I come back from the crusade, I will deal with that. And so he came to the crusade. And I didn't know what had happened. I did not know what had happened. And then as we were preaching, then rain began to fall. But I acted as if I didn't know rain was falling. When Satan is playing trick, I look away, I act as if I don't know Satan is playing any trick. When Satan wants me to say, why now? I laugh, I smile. And so I finished the message. The people thought because I was wet all over my Bible, they thought I would run away. I never run away from anything that comes from Satan. And so I said, if you are going to give your life to the Lord, it's up your hand, and I'm going to pray with you. We did that just like we've done now. And I, now I said, if you are sick, I'm going to pray for you. And I began to pray. And I said, in Jesus' name. And then, final amen. And Chilomon did say, amen. As they said that final amen. The father that died in the village woke up. The, if the father that died, that didn't hear even what he was saying because he was dead, when we said the final amen, that man woke up in the village. 
and I come to you with the same Jesus. Anything that is dead in your body will come alive. Any sickness you have that the Antichrist or the spirit of the Antichrist has put there, everything will be taken away. Tonight you will not run away after the prayer. Uh, by the way, before I finished, uh, you know, the, the rain stopped. And when the testimonies were going on, my clothes dried up. And today, as you are giving your testimony, those wet uh, clothes, they will soon dry up now. Now we're ready for your miracle. We're ready for your healing. When you hear that final amen, the miracle is done. You need healing, you need deliverance, you need miracle, you need performance, you need manifestation, you need the operation of the Spirit of God in your body to take away every infirmity. Lay your hand on yourself and raise up the other hand. We're ready now. At the final amen, you'll have testimony. Father, we thank you for this moment. You are God in heaven. And your power will come down from heaven. No condition on earth disturbs your power. And we know you are going to heal today. You are going to deliver today. Miracles. Supernatural wonder. You are going to do it now in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that everyone here, everyone online, everyone on the radio, everyone over the television, touch, transform, heal them now in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Every swelling in your body, I command that swelling vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray that issue of blood, whether here or online, dry up now in Jesus' name. Ulcer, cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Every pain you have in your body. Oh Lord, I pray, take all that pain away in Jesus' name. Cataract, glaucoma, be cleared away and you begin to see clearly in Jesus' name. Blindness or dimness of sight be healed in Jesus' name. And those who have stroke be healed in Jesus' name. Those who are wheelchair, the power of God comes upon you now. Rise up and walk properly in Jesus' name. Broken, broken bows be joined together now. All that evil, bad luck, whatever, get out in Jesus' name. Here, multiple sub miracles. Online, multiple sub miracles. Wonders for every life. It is done. You have received. You will manifest. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you have a testimony. Check up yourself. You'll find the wonder of God in your life right there.
Pastor National.